All right, this is the last example for all of chapter two. And the reason it's included is because this is the first time in the, um, in the section 2.7 that we've had to find the initial speed. So this is, this is the first time in a while that we've seen that question. And we remind ourselves that it's tougher than some of the other questions can be. But we approach it with exactly the same method. So as we read the question, we can be drawing. A ball is thrown up into the air from the ground. Alrighty, first sentence already gives us information. There was a ball on the ground and it's being thrown upwards. After five seconds, it is found to be 80 meters high. All right, we add gravity before we forget about it. And now we can start to make a list of given information. At a later time point, t equals five seconds, the final height is 80 meters, pretty big, and the initial height was the ground. And because of gravity and falling objects, we know the acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's all of the information given to us in the problem, either in words, in numbers, or in the fact that it's a falling objects problem. So step three, normally, we would rephrase as find blank when blank is true. But with initial speed, this is tougher. This is tougher to do when we are looking for um, initial speed. That was also tougher for acceleration back in section 2.5 when cars were speeding up and slowing down. But the nice thing is, in uh, falling objects problems, we always have the acceleration, so we don't have a way to ask about the acceleration in that same way. Okay, what we really need to do is we need to find that initial velocity if a pair of things are true at the same point in the problem. So in this case, when, if y equals 80 meters when t equals five seconds. That pair of things is both true later in the problem, and so that's the situation that allows us to figure out what the initial velocity is. We're gonna be using the yt equation. Another way that you may have been able to get to this tool from your toolkit is recognizing that in this list of values that we know about, there's nothing about the final velocity. Nothing about the final. And so we don't want to use the Vx equation. That would be a bad choice, or Vy rather. And we wouldn't want to use the Vt equation. That's a bad choice too. That leaves us only with the Yt equation. Perfect. All right, so step four, we write down the equation. Y equals y naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. And now we do the math. So our final y is 80, that's in our list. Our initial y is zero, also in our list. V naught, the initial velocity, that's the thing we're looking for. So it's gonna stay a variable, but we can multiply five to it. And then we have 1 half times negative 9.8 times 5 squared. All right, let's simplify this a little bit. 80 is equal to, the 0 goes away, 5 v naught. And then this whole term we can calculate. It'll be minus 122.5. All right, we're trying to solve for v naught, so let's add 122.5 to both sides before I run out of space. So on the left, then, we have 202.5 equals 5 v naught, so we can divide both sides by 5. So the initial velocity is equal to 40. And it is a positive 40.5 meters per second. Initial speed, though, we don't have to include the sign. And so we do our step six check of does this make sense? 
and 40 is pretty fast. It is faster than the balls that we've been throwing up or down in the previous examples in this section um, by quite a lot. 40 meters per second is about 95 miles an hour, but a um, baseball pitcher could throw that fast. If we had a ball launcher, um, it could throw that fast, and that is consistent with the fact that it got very, very high into the air. 80 meters is a much higher value height than the previous examples we've seen where it was thrown from the ground at lower speeds. So certainly this is reasonable uh, with those kinds of checks in mind. It didn't come out to be a couple of meters per second, like three or four. You and I can quite easily throw a ball at three or four meters per second and it will ne not reach 80 meters. So that number seems reasonable enough for something that is meant to get very high in the air. And that's it, that's the whole problem. Note that the tricky part was the fact that this is tougher when we are trying to find the initial velocity. It is a trickier process to figure out what equation to use. And there are the two different methods. You can find two things that are true together at the end of the problem, or you can kind of do process of elimination. Since the problem wasn't asking us to find the final velocity and didn't give us information about the final velocity, the VY equation and VT equation aren't gonna be any good to us. All right, that's it for chapter two. So the next video that you'll see, hopefully if you're watching these in order, is a lecture video for the first part of chapter three. So I will see you in that next video.